So hi and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk Travel. Today's guests have flown all the way in from Las Vegas, uh, Mark Fancourt and Shane Cole, the founders of Travotec and Vegas Testbeds. Testbed Vegas. Testbed Vegas, I apologize. James, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you, um, good to see you. I know you've been touring, uh, I, had a, I had a tour through Europe and that you, you, you've uh, graced us with your presence here in Klein, so it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Where, and, where else would we want to be? Well, you know, there could be Not some... Just there. There. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, so, gents, before we um, kind of get into the, the, the meat of a conversation, why don't you start with giving us your backgrounds? I know, uh, obviously, Mark, you and I have known each other for a long time, um, but uh, for the audience, why don't you just give us a, a brief summary of, of your transition into hospitality, your history, and, and where you've come from. Shane, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, well, my... my uh, Background from loyalty. Uh, so I worked with uh, Collinson Group for back sort of 10, 15 years ago uh, in their uh, loyalty programs and got to the US through that. And then uh, an opportunity came up to move to Las Vegas to work with an airline, a low cost carrier called Allegiant Air. And uh, they were going through a tremendous amount of growth at the time. So working on their uh, web presence for all their bookings are direct through to all their uh, self management tools for check in and change your flights or then back end sort of airline operational systems. So got to lead teams building stuff that normally most airlines go and buy from Sabre or Amadeus. And that seems to be also very similar to hospitality where there's two big players that kind of dominate and then doing other things, um, you know, kind of then have to then force their way into integrating those things. So my background in that space was, hey, we get to build things you don't normally get to build. And then uh, 2016, the first um, Marriott Accelerator here in Europe was held. and. Uh, I uh, <clears throat> was at an establishment consuming a few beverages and pitched an idea and then we won the first year of the competition and uh, rather silly uh, was that because I'd stayed at a hotel, I thought I knew what a hotel technology should be and so it was a guest, it was a guest experience type system chatbot, right? So um, rather than what are the real problems, so I met Mark at a high tech and then we started talking and as you get into it, it's like, well, actually really, you know, you only really see these problems when you're behind the curtain, yeah. when you actually see, see the true problems that need to be solved. So that sort of, I guess, three years now, I started that journey into hospitality on the hospitality side, similarly coming from the airline space, you don't, you don't know until you start working in it where the real problems that can enable um, things come from, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's my, my awesome. piece And of you're Australian right? as well. I am. How does an Australian, so Daniel's stuck with three Aussies in Cologne, that's, that's a way. <laughs> that's a little bit weird. Um, uh, just give us a brief on how, how you ended up in Vegas, like how, why Vegas? Uh, so I was, uh, I left, I was, I was in Thailand and... Uh, As many Aussies are. And GFC, <laughs> the Lehman Brothers fell over in September 2008 and I was uh, on my way back to London to find a job. And I thought, what the hell am I doing? Because it's like the world was falling apart. And uh, land, uh, met up with um, a constant group and they decided to invest in tech rather than shedding jobs. And they said to me, I turned up at the job and they said, can you go to the US? And on the way over to the US, I met a lady that weekend. Okay. And then three months later, we got married. So wow. yeah, oh, so I got my, my first experience in a Northern Hemisphere winter was... Um, uh, flying into Minneapolis in June, uh, sorry, January, and uh, it was minus 24. Wow. And I had an American apparel hoodie. So, you know, that was the, all these experiences kind of compounded at the same time, which was um, um, meeting someone, jumping into a new industry, and uh, experiencing cold like nothing yeah. else. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I can understand the cold part is <laughs> unpleasant, but... <laughs> okay, Mark. Oh, well, hotelier all the way through. And, um, you know, started off with operation, went to hotel school in Brisbane when uh, Brisbane was hosting Expo 88. Oh, wow, I remember that. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was back, oh, back when I was saying to someone the other day. <laughs> Together we'll show days, the world was the right? day one. I mean, Expo actually was something that people noticed, you know, whereas it now it sort of disappears yeah. into the ether. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, um, and the, this is the other thing that happened in, for Australia at the time was the Japanese had discovered Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, 
Queensland, my home state, being sort of the sunshine state as it's known, holiday destination, the Gold Coast, and that type of thing, we're building lots and lots and lots of five-star hotels with a lot of Japanese investment coming in um, to sort of get the five-star hospitality industry off the ground in Australia. So I, the Queensland government set up a, a, a purpose-built hotel school and brought in you know, a very high calibre of European um, lecturers and I went to hotel school, passed out in the year of Expo 88 and went and worked in Expo 88 right through it and then got into my first property which is a brand new uh, resort that Hyatt built on a place called the Sunshine Coast. So, Worked in operations predominantly through rooms, um, and I ended up becoming exposed to Fidelio in uh, 1989 um, with Beaufort Hotels, which it was building in Brisbane at the time, a six-star hotel experience. Uh, you know, butler service on every floor, uh, you know, five interfaces, um, which of course these days is a bit of a joke, but back then it was a big deal. Anyway, we we put Fidelio in, so I, I got got in very early on the beginning of uh, Fidelio as a product and naturally ended up getting headhunted around yeah. to, 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 to operate hotels that were using it, and then naturally I ended up at Fidelio. Um, so I worked, a common story. Yeah, and I, I worked through that, you know, that was a heady, heady times, exciting stuff. We yeah. couldn't keep it on the shelf. Yeah. And, um, you know, people would ring up and say, hey, can we, can we have your system? Have you, have you seen it? Good enough. But someone told us it was good, and we never okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I I I, I, I ran the the PMS product for Australasia, and um, anyway, around about that time, uh, Fidelio had purchased Executive Technologies in Naples, in Florida, and the main reason for that was to move off a Clipper database and onto Oracle. Mm -hmm. And um, Executive Technologies had a, a CRS. Well, in actual fact, very interestingly, at the time. They had a combined CRS and PMS platform, single, you know, all all in one solution that was uh, already in market. And um, Fidelio wanted Oracle because they wanted a proper RDBMS. Anyway, we formed a, a a small team to launch the initial product, which was a CRS and a CIS product or customer information product mm. for hospitality companies, which of course no one could have such a thing up until that point and off we went with the product and uh, so we had a global team we got it off the ground and had some had some false starts you know along the way but eventually the product took off and um, you know, ended up in, in pretty much most regions in the world being in all of the middle tier uh, hotel groups you know names like Kempinski's you know Peninsula Group Shangri-La um, Four Seasons and so forth so I ended up running that uh, division for Micros for Asia Pacific and then also took on the revenue management uh, product when Micros bought on this too and introduced that to Asia as well. And uh, anyway, I finished up with them in 2003 and, and um, did, a, did, a, did, a, did a startup for an ERP product for hospitality, which uh, was a challenging year and uh, moved on from that and anyway, I ended up joining Pan Pacific, Pan Pacific Hotels and Resorts at that time, who had been a customer of mine um, through the enterprise systems at, at, uh, at Micros Fidelio. And I became you know, the technology head and, and pretty much developed their technology strategy from the ground up, deployed, deployed and standardized that across the group. And then we merged to form uh, PPHG or Pan Pacific Hotels Group with um, United Overseas Land in Singapore. And, Continued that program on and brought the two brands together and then I got the opportunity to join MGM in Las Vegas Which is what took me to Las Vegas and uh, the company had launched a hotel company and um, What was most interesting about that is we'd taken on another Well, it wasn't so much a very a new product at that time But a certainly a new concept and still a new concept for, for industry today, which was an ERP for the whole technology environment so instead of 15 line of business systems, we had one. Mm. And sort of having given my background and had been, had, had been in front of a lot of new technology throughout my career, both as a vendor and as an operator, um, that was a really exciting prospect for me. So I got to experience and deploy, you know, what, what, what 
allowed hotels to run in a truly single operating environment. Um, which is very, very challenging because it's such a big shift for our industry for people to even think that way. And um, so it worked very hard at that, really enjoyed the challenge of it. And then I, I went and actually I joined Senior and um, uh, as the Chief Operating Officer and sort of brought my industry experience into the company to try and take the company to the next level. And um, was with them for just short of three years. and. Uh, and then Shane and I got back together and, and kicked off our, our personal ventures. So, mm. you know, 30, 30 plus years, hospitality, technology, both sides. And, um, you know, it's been a fantastic journey. It's taken me all over the world and allowed me to meet fantastic people. And here I am sitting with an old mate from, you know, Australia in, in Cologne. So given what you just explained <clears throat> and, and, and said and, and all that huge experience over all these years, um, we see a lot of changes currently, especially with the topic marketplaces as well, in PMS environments as well. So what's your what's your given what's your take on on the current situation from what you explained before? Like interfaces, okay, we had five, but the connection was not possible. And now we are all talking about these open APIs, new environments, everything out of one solution, ideally plug and play in theory. Mm. Uh, so what's your take on that currently? Well, look, the, 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 the thing that I learned you know, particularly going through the experience I went through with MGM and, and then with Senium is that, you know, my, my very firm view is that if we can't get the technology more, more connected and integrated in the industry, we're going to continue to struggle. And, and I actually believe that it will ultimately become an imperative for financial success mm. to move into an environment where, you know, the, the problems that we have in, in industry moving technology aside is we, we can't grow job roles mm. because we're expecting our staff to master a swathe of technology. So how can you, you know, your average receptionist has to know the PMS, probably a service management platform, yeah. you know, voice and so on and so forth. The only way that we can truly turn hospitality jobs into interesting jobs, consolidate roles, is by consolidating technology. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the world that we've all lived in for in my entire career, quite frankly, as well, um, re requires this uh, division of basically departmentally oriented technology solutions, and that can't last. You know, that has to change. Mm -hmm. And I think more, it has to change more than, for more than technology reasons. It has to change for commercial reasons. It's going, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for hotel operators to maintain profitability um, without consolidating technology and changing the way they operate hotels. And I say that because I, I experienced it myself with a platform that actually mm -hmm. allowed that to happen. Um, and, and, you know, the industry under that environment looks really, really exciting because you can change everything. You mm. change the whole way you run mm. hotel. So I think it's, it's absolutely imperative, Daniel. And do you um, see certain technologies out there? Like, for example, we spoke with Ben from Impala. We spoke to the guys from Apaleo. Do you see certain technologies as well in the US that are going into that direction, that have that idea in mind and the right concept? Or similar type of yeah. companies? Yeah. You know, I think for me, the, the change that's happened um, is, is more around technology platforms. But in truth, we still have sort of that still, you know, vendors do this and vendors do this and vendors do this and vendors do this. Mm -hmm. What's changed is, um, you know, in, in essence, service bus technology that's made it easier mm -hmm. for connectivity right. between vendors. And of course, the other thing that's changed that is, is you know, at least those vendors who've been able to move into true cloud environments because they only have a single version of the product. Right. But at the same time, we're still talking about connecting all these different systems that mm -hmm. are still different systems. Things are slowly coming more and more together. And, and, and I think that's largely a byproduct of the fact that we just have more technology in industry now. So, you know, if you think about when we started, yeah. a lot of hotels didn't necessarily even have a a procurement system. Mm. Now, at a minimum, there'll be a property management system, prob probably a sales and catering system, a finance platform, a procurement platform, point of sale as a minimum. These are core, and I would like to think, you know, at this stage, a service management platform as well. So there's six core, what I would call core systems, right? Yeah, across on, on, on top. But um, 
and that's what's driven the necessity for you know increased uh, connectivity. It was interesting for me because when I went to Las Vegas, um, you know, MGM and all the gaming companies, for that matter, have great experience with service bus technology and have had for a very long time mm -hmm. because they can afford to, number one, but two, they, they saw the imperative of, uh, you know, an across uh, business experience because they have accommodation, they have food and beverage, they have lifestyle and entertainment, they have spa business. Um, and, and, and they have ticketing business as well. And they did it, certainly at MGM, they, they invested significant uh, resources, financial and, and human, to be able to connect what they call the single pane of glass, which gives the, the operational staff the ability to see that from, mm -hmm. from the customer's perspective mm -hmm. and take them through that booking process. Mm -hmm. Most Seems most res fun. most yeah. resorts that you know in our in our industry today still couldn't couldn't do that across mm. all their various products. So it's it's an imperative, and this has to this has to happen. Mm. Okay. So I, I'm I'm not going to go into the on you know because my hospitality background is not deep, but just just looking in general at technologies that do that, that get to a point where they've got a marketplace. So that could be a great thing if you look at Atlassian did very well by having a marketplace to go and find things and install, and you could expand the use of Jira and Confluence. Um, mm. WordPress has all these great add-ons you can add mm. into it. We know the App Store, whether you got you know Google Play or App Store from, from from Apple, that opened a lot of stuff up. But then it also, when you've got tens of thousands of things in that marketplace that you can try, the things you create confusion. Which which thing am I going to use? Which things actually going to be right for my for my um, for my role? And then you've got so those sort of marketplaces are quite quite broad in in, in those examples that I've given. But in the context of a hotel, it's like, well, their job is to service guests, right? And run, a, run a, an operator, a, a, a building, a property. So while I think you can uh, get, a, get away from standards that take a long time to define, um, which is, I think, some of the questions about HTG, right? It sometimes takes a while to get there. Mm. Um, maybe there's some principles around what does this look like? What's the vision like, right? You know, because hospitality, the building is last, you know, the building's there for yeah. 50 years. Yeah. The speakers are there for 30 years. Yeah. The, there's a longevity. So there, maybe there's some principles rather than set standards that should be sort of taken into it because knowing that, at the end of the day, hospitality is, 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 is about people. Maybe there's some stuff there about, I guess I said longevity, because um, you want to get it in and have it long lasting because retraining people takes time away from doing their actual you know, purpose. Mm -hmm. Being in front of a terminal too much, you know, is that's not their, that's not their role. Maybe um, you know, there's questions on automation, Right, if it's going to take people's jobs away, well, maybe it actually frees them up to actually create better guest experiences because right. or more complicated guest experiences that get solved. Um, so that's the sort of stuff I start looking when we we start diving into this sort of discussion. Is like, well, you know, yeah, everything's open and connected, great, but like you're just going to confuse people who potentially trying to make decisions on stuff that really where does it come back to? And their, their main job is not a technology buyer or a technology selector. Theirs is to, I need to service, I need to operate, I need to- Yeah, it has to make sense. It has to make yeah. sense. But like, but yeah, I so said like, when you get into marketplace, to me, that's just going kind of like, you know, remember back in the day, you get the magazine with this, with a floppy disk on the front with thousands yes. of things to try. And then we've just expanded on that over the years. So now there's 10,000 different things in, in, um, in, a, in a marketplace, like an app store. Which one do I really need to operate my business? And when are we doing things even like this? Like how many things are you then getting into where it's like, oh, I need that functionality. You grab it, you use it, you get used to it. And then all of a sudden the next bit of functionality, this is the whole SaaS model, right? To get that one bit extra, you gotta buy all these extra things. Mm -hmm. So where does that truly leave a hotelier making a decision on a piece of technology if the marketplace approach is something that's entirely geared towards just trying to incrementally kill you with purchases all of a sudden you're spending thousands where you used to spend hundreds yeah i don't know that i, I see what you're saying yeah. i understand that but i'm not sure that that's the intent of the marketplaces that mm. are in in place now yeah so for example um you know affiliates marketplace snapshots that that's not how they're basing their business model what they're trying to do is clearly i think present options to a hotelier that these mm. are available for them given um, that they need to have a certain base, if you like, that they, mm. they can plug those options in. Mm. And, and really, I think what we need to do in our industry is 
we still have a major hurdle in, in getting the hotelier to understand that that's a possibility sure. and that legacy solutions are really, really no longer sustainable for their longevity. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, yeah. building lasts for 50 years. Yeah. Don't put a legacy solution today into a new build because that yeah. is just absurdity. Um, and I think we, we're, we're moving towards platforms that offer the ability for a greater evolution of technology. As technology evolves, the platforms Sorry about that. The platforms that we um, are putting in place today, I think, will last longer than traditional yeah. legacy solutions. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, I mean, the, 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 the real benefit of it is the, is the speed to um, iterate, right? You know, the, the, the ability of not having to do, but, well, version management from a customer's perspective, at least, is that the technology can move along faster and, and you can get capability to market that wasn't there yesterday with, you know, minimal interruption to customer operations and that's fantastic you know you you can't you can't underestimate the value of that certainly coming from a person who spent you know both sides of the industry helping customers you know keep moving with their technology or moving my own companies along with technology mm. you simply can't no. underestimate the, the the change that that has brought to industry yeah. so from from what i see uh from our events as well that we do all around europe and the talks we do and, and the discussions and what have you um to cover the, the marketplace topic um is that it really helps the individual hotels because we all did these rfps in the past and and it took weeks and whatever for hotel groups to put all that information together and interfaces and here and there and they have all these different questions and uh but from an individual point of view from an individual hotel small groups whatever will they ever do a real rfp no they will start running around asking questions do you have this interface but i have that yeah. and whatever and i think that's where a core value of the marketplace mm -hmm. hits uh, uh, because you can just go there and see directly like who is integrated. Well, and also you have such staff. turnover with staff in in, in a hotel as well. that they go to the next place and say, "Hey, I've been using this, exactly. and that it's great." So yeah. they start to bring the technology yeah. with them. Exactly, and you can within a snapshot you can yeah. like see, okay, is it connected or not? Right. And and we all remember those times when there was no uh, support the hotelero in Spain or a hotel tech report or tooly tips or whatever, mm -hmm. where people can just go to and say, okay, that's the interfaces that exist with that yep. company. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was manual hard work yeah. calling people that's modeling, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that there's a big value in that context of marketplace.